Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Commission, City of Bowling Green, Kentucky, regular meeting at City Hall, March 2, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. We will uh, start with the invocation and pledge, and I will have Ms. Melinda Hill uh, make introductions. All right, thank you, Mayor. It is indeed my honor today to introduce to you the senior pastor of Crossland Church, Greg Farrell. It's an honor in my mind for him to be here with us today. And I would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank him for his church opening up for our children to provide internet services while they weren't in school. That's what good communities do. So Greg, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much. Also, thank you for recognizing our healthcare workers. Crossland has definitely been and continues to be a light in our community. With that, Greg Farrell. Humbled and honored to be here. Mr. Mayor, thank you for having us. And uh, uh, Crossland Community Church is, um, and I don't mean this in false pride, we are more blessed to be in Bowling Green than Bowling Green is to have us here. This is a, a phenomenal city. And um, as I told uh, Sue, it's not by accident, it's by leadership. And um, this community continues to operate uh, more like uh, the tide than, than anything else. That The hope is as the tide rises, every ship rises equally with it. The regardless of the size of your boat or the size of your ship, as the tide rises, every boat should rise equally. And hopefully in this community, we understand that that's our responsibility. We leave nobody behind. And as the quality of life rises in this community, it should rise for everybody equally. And we are not ever gonna have the same size boat. That's a fact, that's okay, okay? But the truth is everybody should have equal opportunity. Everybody should have the opportunity to rise to the level for which God created them. And this city continues to honor that and it's rare. Okay, it's rare and it's a beautiful reality to be in a community that understands that what's good for, um, for all of us needs to be good for each and every one of us as well. So thank you for what you do and it truly is an honor uh, to stand here today. But let's go ahead and pray as you begin today's business. Father, we love you and thank you. And government is your idea. And even when government's bad, government is still a good idea. Anarchy is the other alternative. And that's never been good. And Father, you knew that we needed structure. Your world declares the reality that organization and structure is a beautiful thing. We, we love the consistency of the sunrise and the sunset. We, we cherish the consistency of the seasons. We may not like winter as much as we like spring, but we know we need them all. And so Father, you're a God of order and government was your idea. And the great news is, is this government the government of the city of Bowling Green, Kentucky was your idea. You created it. They've been elected, but they've also been called. They've been chosen by you for such a time as this, just like Esther and just like Mordecai, in an environment where a variety of opinions and political persuasions exist doesn't mean there has to be constant division. Harmony comes from different voices singing different parts. The beauty is we're all singing the same song in Bowling Green. And I just pray that you would bless this organization of people who have been charged with a tremendous responsibility to lead at such a time as this, from, from health and human services to our police department to our um, fire and rescue. The stress that they're under is unimaginable and in so many ways immeasurable. And so Father, I pray that you'd give them strength because there's thousands and thousands and thousands thousands of citizens relying on them to make the best decisions possible. And so would you give them the grace? Would you give them the strength and the courage required to make the best decisions? Because sometimes they're the hardest decisions and what they need is what Solomon needed, wisdom, wisdom. And that only comes from above. So bless them, give them strength, bless this city and please father, Bless the United States of America. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Farrell. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Thank you so much. Just little words of wisdom. This little words from Vince Lombardi. Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. So as we work tonight, I hope that we can work for a government that is chasing that perfection and working towards being excellent for our community. All right, let's begin with the roll call. Commissioner Bailey. Here. Commissioner Beasley Brown. Here. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Perigen. Here. Mayor Alcott. Here. Our first agenda of tonight is that we have a few awards and recognition, especially in our community, and we're going to bring up Chief Colson, and he has a special recognition we'd like to start with tonight. Thank you, Mayor, Commission. Uh, the Bowling Green Fire Department Citizen Heroism Award is determined by the following. The Citizen Heroism Award may be made for a conspicuous act of valor and heroism by a citizen under hazardous conditions in which the person is placed in a life-threatening position to save the life of another. On January 29th of this year, at 1124, the Bowling Green Fire Department was dispatched for a reported structure fire at 1421 Holmes Avenue with a report of a female still inside. Uh, fire Department units arrived on scene to find uh, heavy fire and smoke showing from the structure. And when the first units arrived, the residents were escorting pets from the house and the fire units were able to confirm that all residents were out of the structure. After the fire was brought under control, uh, fire department personnel made contact with Brad Shargarodsky. Did I say that right? Close. Close. That's, that's a tough one. Um, who was still on the scene providing shelter for the residents in his vehicle. Uh, Mr. Shargarodsky was in the area when the fire occurred. He advised he found the residents attempting to escort one of their family members out of the home and she collapsed in, at the doorway but remained inside. He entered the burning house and grabbed the female, pulling her to safety. His actions proved to be that of honor and courage to, be, uh, to act on instinct, which resulted in the family member being safe and secure. For his acts of heroism and courage, it is my uh, recommendation to present uh, him with the Bowling Green Fire Department Citizen Heroism Award. And I think he is here and we're gonna have him come up. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. I'm smiling. You, just can't see <laughs> you want to get Melinda and Carlos up, up here? No? Sure. Let's get all the commissioners yeah. up here, as we should. Okay. Come on. One more thing for you, okay. in honor tradition of what you did for our community. We know in this act that you ran towards the fire and you were the good neighbor and you helped save a life. And we say thank you very much. Thank you. So it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you Chief Colson. All right, I know, I believe our city manager, Mr. Jeff Meisel, you have a few more awards and recognition you'd like to make. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to recognize a few more employees tonight for various uh, awards and achievements. Uh, the first one is Cameron Levis. He's in our Parks and Rec Department, Special Populations. Uh, Cameron was recently named one of, the, uh, one of uh, 30 best and brightest young park and recreation professionals in the field. This selection was based on impacts on the agency's community and the service population, uh, contributions to the professional development of the field of parks and recreation, 
and innovative ideas, programs, and or research in the field of parks and recreation. So congratulations to Cameron on that. Uh, also recently, uh, Joe Webb in our Public Works Department was recognized on WNKY as a hidden hero. Uh, ran a story on Joe, very good uh, video. If you, hadn't, if you didn't see that, I would recommend pulling that back up and watching, watching it. Uh, Joe has been with us uh, for 25 years, I believe, or more. 28. 28, sorry, thank you, Greg. 28 years and he was recognized uh, for his dedication to the Public Works Department. Joe watches over all of our roads and recommends uh, which roads need paving, needs fixes. He works with all the contractors, does a lot, a lot of stuff for the city of Bollinger and keeping our infrastructure and our roads uh, running smoothly. Uh, next award I'd like to rec recognize is Jordan Stice. He is a mechanic at our fleet, in our fleet division. Jordan recently received his Emergency Vehicle Technician II certification. Uh, that includes maintenance, inspection, testing of fire apparatus, uh, design and performance standards of fire apparatus, fire pumps and accessories, fire apparatus electrical systems, and aerial fire apparatus. So a lot of uh, anything, a lot of things that can go wrong on a fire truck, Jordan Stice is your man and can fix that now. So he is certified in, in that work. So congratulations to Jordan and I and, uh, wanna thank him. Uh, last but not least, our own Greg Meredith, Public Works Director, uh, was recently appointed to the State Board of Licensure for Professional Engineers and Land Surveyors. Uh, I'm holding a letter from Governor Andy Brashear here Greg is replacing uh, Mr. Daniel Kelly of Louisville, and Greg will be serving uh, on that uh, licensing board until January 1st of 2025. And this is a major honor, I, I would say, for to be appointed to, upon this state board and just a tribute to Greg's professionalism and expertise in his field and respect that he has all across the state. So congratulations to Greg on that. Thank you. And that concludes my awards. And I have one more uh, or two more items, Mayor, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, there will be a need for a closed session. I'd like for Ashley to read the reasons for that. So went to KRS 61810-1B for deliberations on the future acquisition or sale of real property by the city, but only when publicity would be li likely to affect the value of the specific piece of property to be acquired for public use or sold by the city, and C for discussions of proposed or pending litigation against or on behalf of the city. Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Further, any further discussion? All those roll call. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Okay, and then last item, as I've been promising, is uh, a presentation from our South Central Workforce Development Board from uh, our new president, John Swords. I've known John since high school, a friend of mine, and John's going to do a, a great job with South Central. Workforce Development Board and ask him to come here tonight to give you all, you all a, a, an update kind of presentation of what they've been working on. As you know, we have uh, lots of open jobs in our community and his board and his operation uh, through federal funding uh, provides training and uh, partnering up with uh, those seeking employment and with, with uh, employers out there in our community and so john if you don't care to come up and give us your uh your presentation update on what you guys have been up to thank you all right uh can everybody hear me okay yes all right uh jeff thank you for the uh, introduction and uh really i thank everybody here for the opportunity to to speak about workforce development and what we're doing um i have to really like tone myself down i'm really excited about this i only have uh, 10 or 15 minutes and we're doing a lot of really good things uh, that we're very proud of. So I'm going to really frame this in, in three P's, purpose, people, programs, and I'll try to fly through it. Uh, anybody at any time has a question, please stop me and I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. So let me see if I can do this. 
Okay, let me just start very big, um, kind of really big. Um, workforce development is the law of the land. There's 540 workforce boards across the country. It's mandated by federal law. It's, it's really the apparatus, you know, by which the Department of Labor sends money down to the states and then down to uh, regions in each state to execute workforce development. So what you kind of see up there at the top is, uh, is, is what I just described. We have 10 workforce boards in the state of Kentucky. Um, our board, South Central Workforce Development Board, we represent the same 10 counties that make up Brad. Um, you know, when you get down to our level, we are governed by a board of 20, we have 23 board members that govern what we do. By law, over 50% of our board is made up from folks from the business community. The rest of it is made up by small business owners, uh, folks that represent um, uh, government agencies, uh, unions, et cetera. So, we have a broad mix uh, that make up our board and, and govern what we do and provide guidance on what we do. You can see our mission up there. And you know what I like to boil it down to is we serve, we serve, two, folk, we serve two groups, employers and job seekers. That's kind of how I boil everything down. And the rest of this presentation will kind of just have that flavor. So a little bit more about us. Um, you know, the, the South Central Workforce Development Board, I, I've got nine staff right now, and then kind of the area where we kind of uh, operate in is if you look on the uh, picture on the left where it says Career Development Office and Career Team, that's, those are the two title, we owe a title partners that really focus in on workforce development. Uh, then you have the Office of Vocational Rehab and a, uh, Kentucky Skills U. Those four different organizations make up what's called the title partners of, of, of WIOA. WIOA stands for Work, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act and is the, is the federal act that funds what we do. So I kind of directly control career team. They're, they're subcontracted through our organization to provide, to deliver services to jo job seekers. I, I oversee our career development office staff. They're state employees, but I oversee them in our Kentucky Career Center. And then I partner with uh, OVR and Kentucky Skills U. We don't, we all work very well together. That's, a, that's a kind of a good news story in this community. Everybody works really well together. Besides those title partners, what you'll see on the, on the right is every month we run a partner, a community partner meeting. In fact, our, we have one coming up on Thursday. And this picture is pre-COVID, but um, on any given month, we have, you know, we have uh, community partners, Audubon, Goodwill, um, uh, community Action, um, Sky CTC Western, you name it. Everybody comes together and we share what we're doing and we um, share best practices. Um, and really what, what we really try to facilitate is the relationship building so that what we're trying to enable in this community is that there is no wrong door. Anybody that comes into any door in this community with any one of these partners it may not be the right door, but, but the relationships are in place so somebody can quickly get the help that they need. Everybody has their own thing that they do and their own, you know, their own parameters on how they can spend money. And if they can't serve somebody, we want them to be able to know who to call in order to best serve that person. So that's, I mean, that's a real plus in this community because those relationships are very strong. Even though we've moved to Zoom, um, I mean, if you join us on Thursday, you'll see there's probably going to be 30 or 40 different uh, folks on that on that call from different organizations across our community. It's a, it's a very, it's a, it's something to be very proud of in this community. All right, kind of getting, kind of, kind of coming down a little bit into what we do. So we serve, like I said, we serve employers and we serve uh, job seekers. So I'm gonna just give a little flavor of what we do for employers. So with WIOA, with the federal dollars that we've got, we can, we can go in and help employers with, and, and we can help fund on the job training programs. We, can, we have a program called incumbent worker training that we can fund. Incumbent worker training is when you, if the employer says, hey, I've got people that already work here that I want prepared to move up, but they need some training, we can come in and offset some of that training cost. And as they move those folks up, that creates a vacuum for other folks to, you know, new, folk, new people to come in and fill. Uh, there's a color of money called rapid response. That is, um, if, a, if, a, if a factory shuts down or if a company closes, we can, you know, there's some notification processes that have to take place with the state. And when those processes take place, it unlocks a, fund, a funding stream called rapid response where we'll go in with our, a lot of the different partners I just named. We'll go in 
and sit down and work with the company. We'll work with the employees and we'll figure out how to, you know, get them reemployed as quickly as possible or make sure they understand the different benefits and programs and resources they can tap into uh, with, with the coming uh, unemployment situation they're going to face. And then there's another, there's another uh, thing out there called trade, and it's kind of like rapid response, except trade kicks in when the people lose their job because the job goes overseas. It's very specific. So if the jobs go overseas, then we can come in and there's a, there's a, there's a revenue stream called trade that we can come in and apply. So that's kind of the very WIOE-ish, the governmental kind of things that we can do on the top. On the bottom are things that we're doing every day. So we support hiring events. Um, you can see there on the bottom left, um, it's, in, it's in Spanish, but we're partnering with the Foundry. On April 16th, we're gonna do a hiring event over there. And so we've, we've created flyers in English and in Spanish, and we're really starting to, we're, we're really on the front end of promoting that. But um, so, you know, sometimes we run the hiring event, sometimes we just go in and support employers that are running a hiring event. In fact, I have two people today that were up in Butler County supporting an employer-led hiring event. Um, recruitment services. So we're, you know, we're partnering very closely with the Chamber and with Nova Steel, and we're doing some uh, uh, really targeted recruitment for Nova Steel as they come into Bowling Green. And uh, that's, that's a service we provide. Labor Insight, if you follow us on social media, you see every month we publish an open jobs report. There's two open jobs reports published in our community every month, one by the Chamber, one by us. The difference is, is we really try to peel back that big number and make sure everybody understands it. I mean, everybody, I mean, let's, it's 6,000, it's 7,000, it's 8,000, that's what you hear. But we felt like it was important to tell the rest of the story. 27% of those jobs are part-time. 15% um, of those are out of region. 58% of those are below $15 an hour. So we really get into a lot of detail each month on what that 7,000, 6,000, whatever the number is. Last month it was almost 6,800, but we try to peel it back and understand it. Besides that report, any, any company anywhere that wants some um, labor market analysis, we'll do that for them. I mean, it's part, of, it's part of what workforce boards are geared to do. And then lastly, we, uh, we've, we've really gotten creative over the last year with COVID on doing some targeted advertising, targeted advertising for jobs. And then in, in this case, I've got, what I've got up here is we've actually put in a 43-inch TV screen and a kiosk at Fort Campbell to tap into that service population that's getting ready to exit out of the military. So what you see is a picture of our kiosk. If a service member sends, gives us their name, their phone number, their email, and they hit submit, it comes to our staff, and then we start, we start trying to work with them. And, um, you know, career preparation, mentorship, and then hopefully we get them recruited over here and plugged into one of our open jobs. So that, that's not everything we do for employers, but that's just a kind of a, 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 just give you a flavor of what we are doing. Okay, job seekers. So again, with WIO on top, um, this is where a lot of our money comes into play. We, we, uh, we like to spend money on people that have barriers to entry into the workforce. So if, if for folks that qualify, we can put them into short-term training programs that result in uh, getting a credential. Uh, we can also fund things like uh, on-the-job training, uh, work experience programs, and so forth. Um, in, two, in 2020, you know, in this, this COVID year that we just went through, what you'll see on the, on the left is um, last year we funded 67 people through, through WIO. We, we funded 67 people through short-term training programs. A majority of that was CDL, but there was some phlebotomy, some CMA, some certified medical assistant, some uh, certified nursing assistant programs. We spent uh, $234,000 in uh, uh, you know, paying, paying for that training. That was the tuition cost. And the economic impact of that is about $2.1 on our, on our economy. When you take, as they come out of that program with a credential and they get a job, you know, with that credential, a, li a living wage in most cases, um, it has a two point, it's, it's had a $2.1 million economic impact on our community. So that's a really good return on investment for what we spent last year. Uh, kind of looking in the center, those are just a couple of pictures or flyers. Um, we, we serve, we focus in on five focused populations. Uh, that's, that's, it kind of guides who we try to help. So 
students, secondary, post-secondary students. So up there's a picture of an event we did last year at Allen County High School uh, on a career exploration event that we helped them organize. We serve uh, transitioning military, I've mentioned, reentry. We, we do a lot of work uh, throughout our 10 counties in, in a lot of our jails and in a lot of our uh, uh, county attorney offices. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to facilitate uh, you know, people going to work instead of going to jail. Let's keep them out of jail. Let's get them into a work situation where they, can, where they can make money and stabilize themselves. So we're having a lot of success with that, particularly in Barron County and Hart County right now. Um, there in the middle, BC Skills Coding Academy. That's a 15-week coding academy that we've got going on right now. It's uh, in week seven, so they're almost to the halfway point. And these, these this, this is a, we have a wide range of people in this class, but they're gonna come out of this class, which cost a little under uh, $5,000. They're gonna come out of this and they're gonna be making somewhere between 60 and $65,000 um, with, the, with the three certifications they're gonna get in the course. And um, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. Uh, other things that we've got, and this is by no means all inclusive, but we have a, one of the things that we've done is uh, we invested in an online learning management system called Kentucky Career Edge. And it's a platform to help job seekers do career preparation right off of their phone. Since, since our centers are closed and we can't necessarily see people in person, we get them into this free account doesn't cost anything. It's got a lot of good learning content, a lot of good modules. It's got a resume builder. It's got a state-of-the-art inter uh, interview simulator on it where you record yourself answering questions and then you get feedback on it. Um, it's, been a really, it's been a really powerful tool that's allowed us to overcome a lot of the, uh, the challenges we've had with COVID. Of course, we do a lot of career preparation. A lot of it's going on by phone or virtually. And then over this last year, we, we, we did a lot of webinars trying to target different, different population sets uh, and try to get them help. So again, this is just a quick overview of some of the things we're doing in terms of helping job seekers. Um, this is just a snapshot of things that are kind of in, process, in progress that we're working on. We're, we're in the process of rolling out a new, uh, a new brand and a new, really a new nonprofit called My Workforce Future. And this is really meant to help close the skills gap and uh, uh, get, get, get job seekers over the hump and get them into a, a, in, into a work setting where they can start getting the skills that they need. Um, the, you know, the issue is you can't get a job without experience and you can't get experience without a job. And my workforce future is really gonna try to tackle that and get people ex some experiential learning in a work setting so that they can eventually get hired. We're, uh, we're, we're looking at, ex um, we're trying to close the deal on a virtual hiring platform so that we can start running hiring events uh, virtually. Uh, we're working on closing a, uh, uh, also on a one-on-one -on -one coaching platform. I mentioned we've done a lot of workshops and conferences over the last year. And then at some point this year, we hope to reopen the Kentucky Career, Career Center down here. Uh, that's, a, that's a work in progress with the state. And, um, We'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, we, we want it open. We want, we, want to, we want to serve our job seekers in person, but of course there's a lot of challenges to that at the moment. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but this is my, this is my I think my last slide. So 59%, I'm not, I worry about the $7,000 number, the 7,000 know, thousand open jobs figure, that bothers me, I, I lose sleep on it, but I actually lose sleep on this one a little bit more. This, this number represents the, um, this number represents the workforce participation rate in South Central Kentucky. 60% of working age adults, that's 16 to 65, are in the workforce. That means 40% are not in the workforce. And there can be a litany of reasons for that. Um, you know, people step out all the time and they, maybe they have a disability. Maybe they're a caretaker for somebody that's disabled. Maybe, maybe a mother or father raising a child and they step out of the workforce. Um, but there's also a lot of folks out there that could be working that aren't. This, this, that 40% represents almost 100,000 people that, that are just not working. So, you know, that 7,000 number, that 7,000 figure will go away really quickly if we can chip into this number. But the only way we're gonna chip into it is, you know, it's not the South Central Workforce Development Board that's gonna solve this. It's not any one organization because it's kind of a cultural issue. It's an attitude about 
the value of work. And so in my opinion, you know, I like to kind of finish with this, you know, aspirationally, I would like anybody that's a key leader in our community, a faith leader, a political leader, uh, an educator, let's talk about the value of work. What comes with the value of work? It's not just money, it's not just benefits, it's self-esteem. There's social benefits, there's mental benefits to working. And so um, I'm kind of leaving you with my ask of you, like help me with this conversation because if we can just chip into this number just a little bit, we'll close that gap on, on uh, the open jobs that we've got. So that's all I've got. Um, if you're not following us on social media, you should because we do some really good work on social media. And um, we, you can see kind of all the great things that we've got going on. Um, that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Any questions, anything I can, I can answer for anybody? Hey, I just want to say we appreciate this partnership that exists. And, you know, we hear this number, and you, you brought some clarity to the number, you know, about percentage of those being under $15 an hour, percentage of those, you know, being, uh, I'm trying to remember your percentages, but you, you stated, you know, part time, it's, it's not just yeah. like 8,000 jobs that are not available for the community and our partners that are looking for this area are looking to fill those posi you know, positions. And so, you know, there is a lot of stigma right now with manufacturing and what manufacturing used to be and what manufacturing is today. And I will say I've spent some time with Sky CTC, with the ATC, with Greg, and you know, some of the partners you've mentioned, and they are, you know, trying to enable our workforce into these positions. And there are amazing opportunities for scholarship. There's amazing opportunities, you know, for ESL, uh, second language users, you know, for people that you know, feel like if they want to work, there is work available and there's resources to be able to help them. And so I appreciate you bringing this to the city council and because we're advocating to bring in more commerce to our community. And it's important that our jobs and that we can ensure these manufacturers that we will have people for those. So um, that's kind of what I'm hearing you ask of us, and I'm appreciating that you are asking us to do that. And it's gonna take more than just one of us, so thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Um, anybody that wants to meet with me at any time, um, I'm, I've left my cards around, I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you. Let me ask you one thing. Yes, I sir. appreciate everything that is up there because those are some of the things that I talked about in my campaign. One thing that I could tell you is that we know that automation's coming. There's no way I'll take that back. Automation's not coming, it's here. And I'm wondering, you know, with the EDGE program that you have, is there a possibility that you could put up a portal? And what I mean by like a portal, if someone is fired on Friday, they could possibly be hired, you know, on Monday because they're talking to each other and saying, we have this job available and this person that you may have let go, their skills would be able to fill here. So they could go back to work almost immediately because everything else I love that you got to do. I wonder if there, that could be possible to even incorporate. That platform does not do that currently. Um, and gotcha. I'm not sure that it will. It, it's really geared towards learning management. Um, and what you're really talking is more, more kind of a jobs bank and housing, housing employee, you know, job seeker data. And um, I would love to say yes, but I can't, I can't look you in the eye and say yes, it's going to do that you know, gotcha. anytime soon. Anybody else? Thank you, Mr. Swoopard. All right, thank you much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Uh, we will move on to our agenda items. Uh, the first agenda is we have the approval of our minutes for special meetings on January 29th, 2021, and combination of February 2nd, 2021. We will be uh, discussing both of those at this moment. So moved. Second. All right, moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by uh, Commissioner Bailey. Call to order. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2021-29. 
Municipal order approving the probationary appointments of Thomas Miller and Austin Smith to the position of police officer in the police department. So moved. Second. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Uh, moved by Commissioner uh, Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Hill. We have the opportunity uh, this afternoon to hire two certified officers uh, to, for police department uh, to fill some vacant slots we have that, down there. I'd like to ask Aaron Holsey, our HR director, to come forward and present this uh, proposal, these appointments. Is that okay if I close this after? Yes. No, thank you. Great, thank you. It's so great to be here. It's been a year since I've been here in person, so it's great to see you all. Um, so we're pretty excited to be able to um, recommend the appointment of two certified police officers. So in the memo, I described a little bit the benefit of hiring a certified police officer. And so this is someone who has um, been certified in the state of Kentucky. That means they've gone through academy, they've been sworn in. Um, and so the benefit to us, of course, is that we're getting someone who's already trained and already, be, already experienced. Um, we accept um, applications for certified police officers all year round. So just for the public, anyone who's watching, you can apply anytime to be a certified police officer with the city of Bowling Green. Most commonly, we get those applications when we open up the window for, for regular police officers. So that's why we're, we're having two right now. Um, so um, they also have a, a slightly, um, there's, there's uh, less steps in the selection process as well. So that's why um, we're bringing them to you a little bit before the other police officers um, later this month. Um, so first of all, we have um, Austin Smith, and he is a graduate of Bowling Green High School. He went to Western Kentucky, and while he was there, he was actually a cadet with our police department. He later went on to be hired by the Sheriff's Department in 2011. He served as a security officer over at the court until 2017 when he became a Sheriff's Deputy. Um, also, we have Thomas Miller, a graduate of Logan County. He has um, an Associate of Arts degree from uh, Southern Kentucky Community and Technical College. And right now he is a certified officer with the city of Russellville. So do you have any questions? But does this also shorten the probation, uh, this word's not coming to my mind, probationary period where they have to be with another officer? Does that also cut down that time or is that the same? That's the same time. So really what's being shortened is um, the 20 weeks that they would not be in academy. So they'll come to us, they will have a short two week academy, um, just making sure that they're aligned with Bowling Green policy manual, some skills test, that kind of thing. And then they immediately go to their 15 weeks of field training with a PTO. That's the same amount of time that a new officer would have. Thank you. Sure. They are not here tonight. So. Any further discussion? All right, roll call. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2021-30. Municipal Order Approving the Appointment of Jennifer Hines Steen to the Hobson House Commission. I'll move. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Ah, sorry. We have a recommendation for Ms. Jennifer Hines, Dean, to be appointed to the Hobson House Commission. And I uh, asked some of my fellow and sister commissioners to give me some recommendations and her name came to the top of the list and that she will continue on the legacy. And I am nominating her to this position on the board. Any discussion? She, I'll say something about her. I've known her for years and years. And she's a good friend. Um, she's actually a descendant of Duncan Hines. Her, uh, gosh, Cora Jane Spiller and Colonel Spiller, also relations. And I see her almost every time I go into Hobson House, Jennifer's there volunteering or you know what, whatever it is that they need. So I think it's just an outstanding pick. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? All right, roll call. 
Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2021-31. This board are authorizing the acceptance of an economic development bond grant from the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development for Ball Metal Beverage Corpor Container Corporation in the amount of $500,000 and approving and authorizing execution of a grant agreement. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Hill. As you all will recall, just uh, several weeks ago, uh, Ball Metal Beverage Container Corporation came to Bowling Green. Uh, they'll be locating in the, the Trans Park. It's a $305 million investment, capital investment, going to build a half million square foot building with roughly 200 jobs starting out. So an excellent project. As part of their incentive package from the state, uh, the state has granted them a $500,000 uh, bond, which is basically a grant, economic development grant to offset their project cost. Uh, to go with that, though, the state requires a locality to use to be used as a pass-through entity. We've done this several times before in the past with other companies. Basically, they'll send us the, the, the money, we'll hold it, and then when Ball is ready to, to draw the money out, uh, finance, Katie will release the money to Ball uh, just as a requirement from the state. So we are asking uh, this for your approval to do this tonight uh, through as, as an economic development incentive for Ball. Katie's here, can answer any of your questions you have on this. Any discussion? I want to make a comment on this company. I went to the, the grand opening and ribbon cutting, whatever. Um, these aren't just regular manufacturing jobs. These are really good jobs. These are, these are careers. This is, this is how we're, you know, as the pastor said, raising the water where the ships get raised because these are going to be really good jobs, and this is a solid company that's going to do some really good things. And, our, and I'm, for one, so happy to, to have them come here to Bowling Green and choose us over a lot. It was very competitive. And Jeff and I serve on the uh, Intermodal Transportation Authority and hear about all these things, and, and it's just exciting that we continue to win these outstanding companies. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Without any further discussion, roll call. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2021-32. Municipal order approving a clock donation agreement between the City of Bowling Green and Bowling Green Rotary Club for a community clock located at 922 State Street. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown. So as you all have probably noticed, we have a, a beautiful new clock over on State Street and that was donated, uh, put together by the Rotary Club to, to celebrate their 100th anniversary here in Bowling Green. And so we thought it is along the right of way we thought we needed to, to kind of outline uh, each party's responsibility. Uh, so we've agreed to accept it. We're going to pay for all the electricity for it and, and that sort of thing as it r remains on the right of way. And the Rotary has agreed to, to take care of it with inspection and maintenance routine stuff. Uh, that's all in the, this agreement before you tonight. And so we, we all. We're also going to provide them with the property insurance on the clock uh, as, as, as a city asset. So that's what's before you tonight. And we, we're asking for your approval uh, as we take over the clock. And we didn't really want to uh, be uh, too burdened with any upkeep, upkeep with it. And they were gracious to provide that to us in this agreement that they would take care of it. Um, any major or minor fixes to it, they would take care of. So, they've been raising money for this for a long time, and mm -hmm. this is their hundredth anniversary of being a Rotary Club in the city of Bowling Green. And this was what they wanted to do in order to commemorate that and give back to the city. So, I just thought that was outstanding. And strong Rotary Club, absolutely is. And the Rotary Club has been a long-standing partner of our community and always doing amazing things. Uh, they did a partnership with my school and gave us a safe for us, our kids and our cadets participating with flags with kids. 
planting flags around our community and our neighborhoods. An amazing program as well. Yeah, and to that note, Anybody that wants one, get a hold of the Rotary Club. I have one, and it's, it's just, it just makes me so proud to see that because that does a lot of good. The money that, that you buy that flag, I think it's $75, and they come and they do the... Year-round. Yeah, they, they check to make sure they're not going to dig up a, a line or something like that. They do that, and then they put a PVC pipe, put a flag on it, and... You're For good six to, major holidays. You're good to go. Year. Absolutely. So it's a really cool program. Any citizen that's interested in that, you can go, call me, and I'll get you hooked up. All right, further discussion? Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-7, first reading, non-binding. Ordinance creating interlocal agreement with Warren County and Warren County Volunteer Fire Departments. Ordinance creating and approving interlocal cooperation agreement for automatic aid for active shooter hostile event responses with Warren County and Warren County Volunteer Fire Departments. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown. So, as you all know, we, we already have a, a common a mis automatic aid program in place uh, where we help the county and the county helps us. And this before you tonight is an agreement for uh, additional assistance for technical rest. Oh, actually, we're on the, I'm sorry, active shooter. Uh, hostile event responses and this would be uh, another automatic aid agreement between us and Warren County if there ever was an incident in Warren County we would provide aid where uh, our fire department would go in and provide uh, services to for for uh, for first aid um, rescue tactics uh, for active shooter events with, with they have protection gear for to do this job and um, would provide hemorrhage hemorrhage control for anybody that that is bleeding and uh, the rescue task force would deploy so we are asking for your approval uh, on this agreement with Warren County and Warren County Fire Departments uh, as listed in in the agreement uh, Chief Colson is here along with Deputy Chief Gillum along with city attorney Hightower, and they can answer any detail, detailed questions you may have about this agreement. This is, this is the first of two. This is for the active shooter uh, hostile event. I'd like to say in discussion, I applaud this effort. I applauded the effort that we have with the agreement with WKU police and our Bowling Green police. If there was an incident in our town our town, our community, our county, they see it as a single incident, a threat against our community, and it's our combined forces coming together to work together. And I think and applaud that. And a great job, Chief, on this one. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-8. Ordinance creating interlocal agreement with Warren County and Warren County Technical Rescue Team. Ordinance creating and approving interlocal cooperation agreement with Warren County and Warren County Technical Rescue Team relating to automatic aid for technical rescue services. So moved. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown. So this is the other uh, aid agreement uh, before you tonight. This is for any kind of technical rescue, such as uh, extrication, rope rescue, water rescue, trench rescue, confined space rescue, or structural collapse types of rescues. And this is an agreement between uh, Warren County Fire Departments and the Bowling Green Fire Department for $10,000 annual amount. It's basically like a retainer if, if there were in need of services we would go and provide those services anywhere in warren county uh, and assist the warren county fire departments again chief colson has worked on this uh, along with uh, city attorney hightower and are here can answer any questions you might have on this any discussion further roll call bailey yes beasley brown yes hill Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-9. 
Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning two tracts of land containing 49.31 acres from AG Agriculture HB Highway Business and RM4 Multifamily Residential to RM4 Multifamily Residential located at 0 and 494 Hub Boulevard, presently owned by the Hub East LLC and Hub Multifamily LLC. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Hill. I will state this was a first reading non binding. Okay, any discussion on this one? No further discussion. Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-10, first reading, non-binding, binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a portion of attractive land containing 19.58 acres from AG Agriculture to LI Light Industrial, located at 6309 Russellville Road, presently owned by estates of Frank T. and John Bacham Wheeler with Southwest Developers LLC as the applicant. I'll move. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Any discussion on this one? I'd like to just find out, is this area already, I guess, um, in a light industrial area? Or is it like something that we're rezoning and making it more light industrial? Hello, good to see you all. Um, so this is an addition to it, a previous rezoning. So there is light industrial just to the north of it. This That's is kind of more in the middle of the field if you if you went out there. So it's just to the south of that. They're adding this this property on to rezone it, and it'll be an extension of the previously approved approved rezoning. You're welcome. Peterson, I had a follow-up question, if you don't mind. Is that okay, Mayor? Absolutely. Uh, I was just, the, there had been notes in your staff notes about um, the parking lot and where it, it usually needs to be, and I was just um, going to ask if that had been resolved with them. So, can you point me to where you're... Well, uh, Mr. Pearson, I was hoping you would know exactly where it Yes, <laughs> yes. There wasn't uh, too much discussion on this one since it was a... It was a uh, extension so they're building a new road off of Russellville Road okay thank you In the staff notes part Let's see. All right so uh, okay so in this there's this is in a special focal point plan area that requires a certain percentage of the parking to be behind the building so it's a little I guess unique to that area so they added a condition to meet that so they so they met that requirement to where the most of the parking would be behind the building instead of out front that's my only question thank you all righty thank you all right any further discussion thank you sir all right roll call please bailey yes beasley brown yes hill yes perigen yes alcott yes Ordinance number BG 2021-11, first reading, non-binding. Ordinance relating to classification pay schedule. Ordinance amending the classification pay schedule G for general classified employees of the City of Bowling Green for fiscal year 2021. I'll move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Mr. Misley, you have any comments on this one? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is, uh, we recently had a resignation in our Code Enforcement Division and I'd like to ask Aaron Holsey to come forward again and, and lay out the plan we have put together uh, for the Code Enforcement Division and uh, their, what the new leader position would be. Aaron. Sure. Um, so um, we did recently have a resignation of James Knapper. Um, Mr. Knapper served um, in our police department and retired and then he joined the Code Enforcement. So we're very grateful to his many years of service. Um, every time we do have a resignation or a retirement, we just kind of look at the position very closely 
and we we don't blindly just refill it the way that we've done it before so um, the director of neighborhood and community services where this division falls um, Brent Childers and I sat down and talked a little bit about the position we looked at the pay schedule and um, we decided for what we're looking for um, and in addition to the positions that um, are similar on the schedule that an upgrade is appropriate um, it also had the title of coordinator, which I did not believe appropriately described what this person does. This person is the manager of the division. This person supervises six or seven employees. They have um, several different varying roles, our, our code enforcement inspectors. Um, we have um, another administrative um, assistant in there. We have, this is where our animal control falls. So. Um, many, many different responsibilities dealing with the public, um, frequently partnering with you all to get some different things resolved. So um, I am requesting that this be reclassified from grade 121 to grade 123. Based on um, Mr. Knepper's prior salary, the um, cost to the city is pretty negligible at this point. Um, and uh, will we'll only cost um, a few thousand dollars to do this upgrade, um, which will probably be made up by the fact that it's vacant right now. So a um, couple listing of responsibilities for this position. Um, and if approved, I would just like to put in a small plug for this position. We're really going to be looking to our community leaders um, to um, uh, think about anyone that they might know that could fit this position. Um, code enforcement manager sounds very technical and sounds very specific. Um, we do not need someone that has code enforcement experience for this position. We really need someone who is going to be a leader um, to bring this division together, to be a really positive community partner. Doing code enforcement is really hard um, for everyone. So um, someone who's just going to be positive and creative and a good leader, we can teach them code enforcement. So just keep that in mind when uh, when you see that come out of, of anyone you can think of that that might fit the bill and um, we think in this in this grade it, it's, a, it's a very nice paying job as well so um, hopefully we will we'll find someone really great for this position do you have any questions question all right roll call Bailey yes Beasley Brown yes Hill yes Perigen yes Alcott yes Municipal Order Number 2021-31. 30, 33? Sorry, th 33. Okay. Municipal Order authorizing the submission of an application for Homeland Security Grant Funds through the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Assistance to Firefighters Grant, Fire Prevention and Safety Grant Program, in an amount up to $4,000, $286 for the purchase of smoke detectors for the fire department. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley-Brown, second by Perigen. Uh, our fire department would like to apply for this uh, assistance of firefighters grant um, in the amount of $4,286. Um, this would be to purchase smoke detectors. Uh, what, what, what the memo, as the memo says, uh, BGFD would look for uh, areas in which uh, we've had recent fire incidents, age of occupants, uh, high risk areas, residences uh, to establish target areas and we would go into those areas and, and, and pub pub publicize the fact that we're going to give these away and, and go put those into play. So uh, this is a grant that requires a 5% match, of course it's minimal $214 be covered out of the fire improvement fund and chief colson is here tonight along with nick cook who both worked on this uh put it together to get this grant money and we would like your permission to apply for this money we've gotten a couple of these over the last year or two uh, from the assistance to firefighters grant fund and would like to continue with that very good source of of grant I love the match on this one, 5%. So incredible it's, job on that. It's very good. And I love the 10 year lithium batteries because I just switched to those and it has been the most marvelous thing ever to not have the beeping of fire alarms. Get <laughs> woken months. up with the chirps anymore. Yes, exactly. All right, further discussion? Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. 
Municipal Order Number 2021-34. Municipal Order authorizing the submission of a 2021 grant application to the Kentucky 911 Services Board for 911 system radio and phone dispatch console equipment in an amount up to $186,409. So moved. Second. All right. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Bailey. This is another round of uh, grant money being offered out there by the 911 Services Board. Uh, again, we have gotten this money before for other things down at the police department for 911. Uh, this would be for two additional dispatch uh, console centers uh, in 911 Center, and this would bring us up to a total of nine for in our in our. 911 center. Uh, these would go to uh, purchasing uh, for the uh, the CAD system stations that they, they use down there, uh, and this all integrates with the new um, CAD system with Motorola that we just went live with, along with all the other uh, bells and whistles that that system now does with with providing service. But this is for uh, the actual console workstations, and these aren't cheap, as you know, but the, this is for $186,000, and there's no grant match required for this one. So we'd really like to get this one and we request your approval to, to go after this one. Again, Chief uh, Delaney, I believe, is here, and Nick Cook is here all, as well to answer any questions you might have. Great, we're going for this grant. Uh, further discussion? Just again, thanking uh, Nick for always going after these great grants. <laughs> and also just really grateful that we are continuing to invest in our dispatch center. And I know, um, you know that's such an important part of keeping our citizens safe when they're in that moment um, of needing life-saving services. So grateful we're expanding as our city grows and um, just grateful for all the work that they're doing. And I know it's, it's adding the ability to text to 911 is probably another thing that they're adding to their plate. So hopefully this will also help uh, now that we're bringing on multiple ways for our citizens to be able to reach our 911 center. Other discussion? All right, roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2021-35. Municipal Order authorizing subrecipient agreement between the City of Bowling Green and Hope House Ministries Incorporated for Community Development Block Grant Coronavirus Funding. So move. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner uh, Perigen. So as you all probably remember, we've gotten a couple of rounds of CDBG uh, CARES money that uh, Brent and his staff have been allocating and this is just a slight request slight tweak or request to tweak our process of funding for or providing for rent and mortgage assistance as well as utility uh, assistance and i'd like to ask brent childers to, to come up and give you uh, the details of what this would uh, do brent yes thank you mr city manager uh, so last fall we awarded to a consortium called together bg uh, that was led by Brass as the contract vendee as part of our agreement. Uh, as they extinguished that round of funding, we looked to that group as a round two of, of funding from our CARES CDBG funding. Uh, Brass decided that they no longer wanted to be the lead as part of that. Uh, so we went back out to the partnership and Hope House, uh, local nonprofit here in our community, who was part of that consortium, that Together BG, stepped up and said that they would be the lead. Uh, so. Tonight's agreement uh, that is before you is for us to do an agreement with Hope House uh, to do CDBG CV for rent, mortgage, and utility assistance. So they'll be taking all the applications, they'll be doing all the screening, all the verification, and then paying the rent and utility and mortgage payments on behalf of the, the clients and tenants, and then they will be reimbursed by the city uh, through the CDBG program. So I'll entertain any questions anybody might have. Thank you. I have a, sorry, a question, Absolutely. I apologize. <laughs> uh, first, I just wanna thank all of our community partners for partner th partnering with us to get this uh, much needed relief to our community so that we can prevent um, folks going into homelessness uh, because of the pandemic. Um, I know that uh, there's some folks who are e eagerly awaiting more funds coming to this um, entity. So when will it be 
I guess, available again to be for the community to be able to. Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Okay, yes. good. Yes. So this was actually on the agenda item uh, for the previous agenda. Uh, but given the sake that we didn't want families to have to wait two weeks because of, of our inability to have a meeting due to the weather, uh, we move forward with this, but we would need to bring it back to you all for formalization. Uh, so we've already had our kickoff meeting with Hope House and the partners, uh, and they started taking requests two weeks ago. So we've updated our website, or we will be updating our website uh, to reflect all the contact information. So if people go to our website, bgky.org, at the top banner, uh, they'll see the phone and contact information for Hope House, uh, Refuge BG, uh, Habitat for Humanity. I think Brass is still uh, a part of the Together BG Consortium. In the morning, they can call any of those organizations. Great. Perfect. Thank you all so much. So I got a comment. I worked with the city attorney the other day on looking at some numbers on this, this project, and I just want to let the citizens know this. A total of $429,770 has gone out to the citizens of the city of Bowling Green for rent, uh, utility payments, and mortgage. Of that, $341,657 has specifically gone to rent. So I think that is just an astronomical number. And, uh, you know, when, when we talk renter's assistance and renter's support, I think, I think we can point right to, to the CARES Act and to you, Brent, and our nonprofit agencies that are really making a big, huge difference. And so thank you. Thank yeah. you. So those are big numbers. Absolutely. For the discussion all right roll call please Haley. yes beasley brown yes hill yes perigen yes alcott yes this will order number 2021-36 this order approving an amendment to the bg care small business grant program with small businesses who qualify for economic relief so, so moved. moved simultaneously i'll take uh commissioner Beasley Brown as moved and second by Commissioner Hill. Last summer, uh, as you know, what this is what I'll call the regular CARES Act money. Uh, there's kind of two pots going on here. Uh, we received uh, our first allotment of CARES Act money and in the late summer we brought to you a program called the BG CARES Small Business Grant Program where we wanted to help out our local businesses uh, due to, to COVID and the impacts of it and the pandemic. And so we had earmarked approximately $1,885,000 to go towards this, this uh, project to help small businesses. Uh, to date, we have uh, awarded one point or $1,639,000 and helped a roughly 365 small businesses. We came to you about a month or so ago and we upped our amount. So it may have been at the retreat, I can't remember. But after that went into play, uh, we are now uh, foreseeing a shortage and we would like to tap into the second allotment that we recently got of the million five roughly and use some of that money to continue to help small businesses uh, and, and get them back on their feet. And so Brent can give you the details of how this is, has been working. Katie's been in on this project as well, very heavily reviewing applications. So I'll turn this back over to Brent again, if he can kind of uh, take this home and, and give you the final uh, details of how this will, will, will finish out. Brent. Yeah, so uh, this is another one that was on the prior agenda. Uh, wasn't heard, but we didn't move forward with this one until we had the approval. Uh, so to date, we have spent all $1.885 million. Uh, everything has been spent out. Uh, we still have a number of applications that are eligible that we have received, we have reviewed, they're eligible, but we don't have the money. Uh, we have stopped receiving applications as of February 2nd, uh, so we no longer took applications. That's when we hit our mark uh, as part of our review process. So what we're coming to you all today uh, is to, to ask for your support in moving up to 500. We don't think that we, it will be that full amount uh, because some of those pending applications are not uh, eligible to receive it. Uh, so as we go through, we still have some more applications to review uh, that had issues that they, we gave them a deadline to come back and get that resolved. 
uh, either with holdings issues or property tax issues. And so Friday we would be reviewing those to determine that final number. Uh, so of that 500,000, uh, they would be for existing applications that have already been received and approved and that would be paid out next week. And that would be the actual end and finalization of the program. Um, and all told, we've received 587 applications um, and have paid a little over probably 400 uh, grants to small businesses. Uh, so with that, I'll entertain any questions. So that this is the gap between the 365 that have been paid and the 587 that- yes, It's not a full 587 because the 587 is a total number. There are some of those that were ineligible. The business wasn't based in the city. It wasn't open in the right timeline. There was, there was, so the 587 is the total number of applications that came in the door. Uh, the, it's the gap between the 365 and the five something. Uh, without the database here in front of me, I can't tell you exactly what that number is. No new applications being entertained. This no. is just closing out what we've already yes. done. We, and we were pretty much, uh, if you could imagine, a, a big stack of applications. We got to here, and if the next person on the list, we were out of money. And so we wanted to use the opportunity to finish out the stack is, is really what we're trying to do is finish out the stack of applications. Uh, and so those that had issues is what we call them uh, that need to come back. And some were very minor, clean up a month of withholding, uh, a three-year-old property tax bill, things like that, that they need to come back in and fix up. We gave them a deadline that you have to have it done by this date and we'll consider it. Uh, and so it's clearing out the stack that is there. I'll take this opportunity to thank you on behalf of the small businesses that felt the need to apply for this. It's critical we help them and support them and get them. It, it's been a very interesting program uh, to administer over the last four months or so. Uh, it's, we've learned a lot about, the, about what businesses are in Bowling Green. There were things that we never knew existed here. Uh, little little shops and small businesses that we drive past every day that we didn't even know existed and kind of the backstory of those businesses and how they came to be and what the impacts have been. Uh, and the other interesting part of this is the impacts, there are very direct impacts that we all know of, the bars, the restaurants, the hair salons, things like that, but the indirect impacts of because this was done, then this other business that was impacted and things like that have been very interesting. Any other questions or concerns? Sort of like the shoe repair guy that really got helped out by social media. I was just, I just, oh, what a great story. What a great story. So anyway, thank you. Absolutely. Further discussion? Great job. Roll call. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-2, second reading, binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning tracts of land containing 1.0909 acres from CB Central Business to PUD planned unit development located at 1010 State Street, 511 East 10th Avenue, and a portion of Zero Chestnut Street, presently owned by 1010 Properties, LLC. So moved. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner... Hill, second by Commissioner Perigen. Any discussion? This is second reading. No further discussion. Roll call, please. Haley? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-3, second reading, binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning attractive land containing 15.36 acres from GB Journal Business and RM4 Multifamily Residential to HB Highway Business, located at 1300 Campbell Lane, presently owned by MPT of Bowling Green, Vibra LLC. So move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Perigen. This is second reading. Is there any discussion further? Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-4, second reading, binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning attractive land containing 6.604 acres from RS 1A single family residential and F floodplain to GB Journal Business PUD planned unit development and F floodplain located at zero Morgantown Road Presently owned by Lost River Holdings, LLC. So, so second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Uh, this is second reading. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. 
Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-5, second reading binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a tract of land containing 14.2912 acres from AG Agriculture to PUD Planning and Development and RM4 Multifamily Residential, located at 1510 Kentucky Highway 185, presently owned by MNM LLC. So move. Second. This is moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Perigen. This is a second reading. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2021-6, second reading, binding as amended. Ordinance amending code of ordinances. Ordinance amending chapter 25 code of ethics of the city of Bowling Green code of ordinances to amend subchapters related to board of ethics and penalties. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown. This is a second reading. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Is there any public comments at this time? Please approach, state your name, state your address, and we'll give you three minutes for the podium. Uh, my name is Brian Fishback. I'm a resident of Warren County. Uh, I'm here to talk about summer strolls. Can you state your address room. too, sir? I live in Northern Warren County. Clifford Way. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Fishback, go ahead. Oh, anyway. um, Shake Rack community residents uh, would like to have their voices heard during a summer stroll, if you all still have them. Um, their neighborhood has been altered more than any other neighborhood in Bowling Green, Warren County the past 15 years or so, it seems, maybe in the state of Kentucky. Uh, Shake Rack community is on the National Historic uh, Register for Historic Sites. Um, some neighborhoods in Warren County have had uh, two summer strolls. They haven't had one yet. So Shaker community residents are looking forward to having their voices heard by Bowling Green and Warren County's local government leaders. Uh, there is a COVID-19 happening right now, so maybe we can get all the Shaker community residents vaccinated so everyone, everyone can participate in a summer stroll. Uh, before more Bowling Green and Warren County local government officials allow more of the Shake Rack community to be altered or taken away. People have lived in the Shake Rack community the past 50 years are interested in having their voices and opinions heard about the area that they've been living in and the changes that have taken place. Like uh, other people in Bowling Green, Warren County and neighborhoods have had their opinions heard during the past 15 or 20 years. There's quite a few things to discuss. So if there's a sign up sheet or a line to stand in. I'm here to help the Shake Rack community get residents to be there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fishback. Is there any other public comments at this time? All right, no further public comments at this time. Our next scheduled meeting will be March 16th, 2021, and we will adjourn the formal and we will go to closed session at this time. No formal action coming out of closed session. Copy. So move. Closing this.